This video explains how to split an image into a raster grid using the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you an example. And for this example, we first need to create an image file that we can then split into a raster grid. So first, let's create some data that we can draw in our image file. And we can do that, as you can see, in lines two to four of the code. So after running these lines of code, a new data set called data is appearing at the top right. And we can print the first six rows of this data set by running line five of the code. And then you can see that our example data set contains two columns, x and y. And both of these columns contain numeric values. So in this case, I'm going to draw our image based on the ggplot2 package. And for that reason, we first need to install and load the ggplot2 package, as you can see in lines 7 and 8 of the code. I have installed the package already, so for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line 8 of the code. And then in the next step, we can use the png function to export our plot that we want to use as an image file to a directory on the desktop of my computer. So as you can see at this point of the tutorial, I have an empty folder on the desktop of my computer, which is called my directory. So if we go back to our studio, we can use the lines 10 to 17 to export a scatter plot based on our data frame data to this directory. So after running these lines of code, you can see that a new image file has been created in our folder, which contains a scatter plot. And now in the next steps, I will show you how to split this image file into a raster grid. So for that, we can go back to our studio. And in the next step, we need to install and load the magic package, as you can see in lines 19 and 20 of the code. I have installed this package as well. So for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line 20 of the code. And then in the next step, we can load our PNG file that we have just created using the image read function. So after running line 22 of the code, a new image data object called my image is appearing at the top right. And now we can apply the s.raster function to this image file to create a raster based on our image file. So after running line 24 of the code, a new raster object called my raster is created. We can also check the dimensions of our raster using the dim function. And then you can see that our raster has the dimensions 480 times 480. Now, if we want to create image files that contain only certain parts of this raster, then we can apply the code that you can see in lines 28 to 34. So in this case, I want to export only the upper left part of our image file. And to do that, we first need to call the PNG function to specify the name of the image file that we want to create. Then I'm also using the PAR function to specify that I want to remove all the space around our image file. And then we can call the blot function. And within the blot function, we can subset the raster object that we have created before. And in this case, we are specifying that we want to draw the parts of our image file, which are ranging from the first to the 240th row of our raster and from the first to the 240th column of our raster. So after running these lines of code, you can see that we have created a new image file in our folder. And this image contains only the upper left part of our input image. So similar to that, we can use other subsets of our raster to export other image files based on our input file. So in this case, I'm creating an image file based on the upper right part of our raster. So as in the first example, I'm extracting the first to the 240th row, but then I'm specifying different columns. So in this case, I'm exporting the 241s to the 480th column. So after running these lines of code, another image file is created. And as you can see, this image file contains the upper right part of our input graphic. Now we can export basically any part of the raster that we want. So in the next steps, I want to export 
the lower left part of our file and the lower right part. So after running lines 44 to 58 of the code, two more image files are appearing in our folder. So as you can see at this point, we have created four image files based on our input image file. And those four files contain the upper left, the upper right, the lower left and the lower right parts of our input file. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.